Hey Canucks fans, welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary for Friday, June the 29th. I'm Clay Emo at Canuck Clay on Twitter. I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram. And I'm a founding member of the GLCPC, the good looking Canucks Positivity Club. We're all looking forward to Sunday, not just because it's Canada Day, but because it's the start of the NHL free agent frenzy. Not sure how much of a frenzy it's going to be. We'll see how active the Canucks are going to be, see where John Tavares goes. A lot of interesting storylines, but we'll cover those as we go throughout the weekend. For today, I actually want to talk about the Canucks goaltending situation, and in particular, the Canucks goaltending situation when it comes to their coach, their goaltending coaching. Now, full disclosure, I'm going to be very biased here, because I'm going to spend a lot of this video talking about my first cousin, Dusty Emo. So let's talk about the goaltending situation first. We know that Dan Cloutier has decided to resign, at least from being the head goaltending coach, so he can spend time, more time and deal with family issues. And, and of course, we, we applaud him for that. I always say family first, and it, it goes without saying that it, there's something that needs to be taken care of, or if he needs to spend time there, that's the most important thing. Having said that, he's the third goalie coach to leave the Canucks in the last eight years. We had Ian Clark for about six or seven years from 2003 to 2010. Then we had Rolly Melanson from 2010 to 2016. And now we have Dan Cloutier for the past two years. And over the past few days, I haven't heard it specifically, but my brother Jason, who's uh, very knowledgeable about the Canucks as well, that was presuming that I'm knowledgeable about the Canucks, he told me that he heard two different interviews on the radio, one with Corey Hirsch in Sportsnet 650, and one with Kevin Woodley on TSN 1040. And they're talking about prospective candidates for the, the coaching job for the Vancouver Canucks. And my cousin Dusty, Dusty Emo, was the only name that came up in both interviews. Apparently, Corey Hirsch on Sportsnet 650 talked about um, two candidates, and he didn't say they're the front runners, but he did say two potential candidates could be former goaltender Alex Ald, now a, um, a reporter, a broadcaster, a host with Sportsnet 650, and the other one being my cousin Dusty. Then Kevin Woodley, the goaltending expert on TSN 1040, he talked about Ian Clark being likely the favorite, which makes sense given his history with the team. And then the other, another name, he mentioned a few names, but another name he mentioned was my cousin Dusty. So between Corey and Kevin, the only name that both of them mentioned was indeed my cousin Dusty. Dusty Emo. So let me talk about my cousin Dusty. Um, I've kind of talked about him a few times throughout these videos and I always name drop him on Twitter because that's what I do. I'm a name dropper. But in essence, Dusty was a, uh, uh, is, but he was a very exceptional goalie coming up through the junior ranks. He played for the New West Bruins. He played in front of Olaf Kozig, actually. He went to Lethbridge Hurricanes. He played in front of Jamie McLennan. So he had a great junior career. Unfortunately, didn't get drafted by the NHL. Went to a, a few pro tryouts and stuff. But really, his claim to fame, well, a couple of them. He started for the Japanese national team in the 1998 Winter Olympic Games in Nagano, in Japan. So what a thrill to be the starting goalie for Japan in those Olympics almost, well, 30 years ago now. No, 98. That's bad math. 20 years ago. So that was cool. You know, I would get up super early to watch him on TV. Sometimes the games were on TV. Sometimes they weren't. But it was just cool to have to see Emo on the back of a Japanese, a national jersey. And that was after a few years of playing pro hockey in Japan. Then, most recently, Dusty has got into the coaching ranks. He was coaching in for a couple, you know, AHL teams. And then in the past few years, he spent two years in the Winnipeg Jets organization. So working with guys like uh, Connor Hollebuck and Michael Hutchinson, which is pretty cool. And then two years ago, he moved to the LA Kings organization as their goaltending development coach. And then he's been working with guys like um, Jack Campbell and Jeff Zatkoff. I think that's how you say his name. And guys in the, in the Kings organization. And the cool thing is, and you might remember the story from October 2016, already at the start of the year, the LA Kings were having goaltending issues, injuries. So both of their, their main guys, uh, Jonathan Quick and Peter Budai were injured. So the two Kings guys were injured. So of course you bring up your two AHL guys. So that means that Jack Campbell and Jeff Zadkov went up. So now you got the four goalies basically, two injured, two of the Ontario Reign, the AHL team, their goalies up with the Kings. So now you need goalies for the Ontario Reign. So they signed Dusty's son, Jonah, so my, Dusty's kid, um, so my first cousin once removed. He's actually not my nephew, but as an aside, a lot of people call their cousin's kids their nephews and nieces, but that's not true. It's actually a first cousin once removed, but we'll save that for another video, or we'll explain that more later. Anyways, back to the issue at hand. So then they, the Ontario Reign signed Jonah, Dusty's son, to a pro contract so he could play in that game, and then they needed a backup goalie. And in an emergency basis, they signed my 
my cousin Dusty. So there he was at 46 years old at the time, sitting on the bench, making history because they were the first father-son duo to suit up for a same team. I don't think, not even goaltending notwithstanding, I believe they were the first father-son duo to suit up for the same team at the same time. I, I may be wrong on that, but for sure is the first goaltending tandem. But anyways, it made the NHL.com, it made ESPN, it made, of course, all the Daily Hive here, it made all the, all the big news outlets because it was a pretty cool story, especially because it was a local boy and because uh, Dusty's family's from Surrey and because, of course, it was my first cousin. So I shared that like crazy, name dropping, as always, like I like to do. And that was kind of cool. So that was October 2016. Look it up. Actually, I'll link to a couple stories down below because it's such a, a cool story. Dusty did not get into that game. Maybe thank God for the Ontario rain, but at least what a thrill for Jonah to have his dad, his, uh, basically a goaltending coach, sitting on the bench, ready to come in if he, if he needed to. So I, I guess this is the other thing we, we should think about when it comes to goaltending coach. You have the main coach who works with the pro team, and then you have what's called the goaltending development coach who works with the, the farm team. So right now, um, Dusty's in, in, like I said, in the Kings organization, working with the Ontario rain and their goalies. Billy Ranford, ex Edmonton Oiler goalie, and uh, among other teams, he is the main LA Kings goaltending coach. So you have basically Bill Ranford working with the Kings, and you have my cousin Dusty working with the Ontario Reign. Now, let's get back to the Canucks situation. I've heard um, from a couple sources that Ian Clark seems to be the front runner, but nothing's been announced yet. And would Ian Clark come back to the team? Um, that, that remains to be seen. But if Clark does not come to the team, then obviously the Canucks are going to have to look at other options. And my understanding is Dusty would be a candidate for that uh, option. Now, I'm not trying to get anyone in trouble. There's been no tampering. The Canucks haven't talked to the, ta to the to Dusty yet. They haven't talked to the Kings for permission to talk to Dusty. Who knows? I don't even know if that's going to happen. I'm just speculating here. All I'm saying is, wouldn't it be cool if we saw my cousin Dusty in the Vancouver Canucks organization? Wouldn't it be cool if he was on the ice practicing with the team? Wouldn't it be cool if they had to sign him to, actually I don't know if this would be cool, sign him to an emergency contract and you see Emo on the back of a Canucks jersey? Wow, that would be really, really cool. Actually, and we've seen Emo on the, in, actually, on the Canucks jersey because Dusty has played uh, for many years now in the alumni game. So I would have to get tweets. I would have to be sitting at Rogers Arena watching these games or I get tweets or, or messages from friends saying, hey, is that Dusty guy your cousin? Is, you know, it's neat to see Emo on a Canucks jersey. I said, yeah, of course it is. Um, you know, better than some guy just making parody songs and video blogs from his car three times a week. Okay, so that's what I wanted to share today. Just some news, just speculating, not tampering, not getting anyone in trouble. The Canucks haven't talked to Dusty. The Canucks haven't asked the king's permission for the king's permission to talk to dusty but i'm just saying it would be cool it would be amazing it would be awesome whatever super superlative you adjective you want to use if dusty emo was indeed a goaltending goal coach with the vancouver Canucks. see i'm so excited i can't even say it and i and remember this i'm not talking about the goaltending development coach working with utica i'm talking about the main goaltending coach working with the vancouver canucks that would be working with guys like marstrom nielsen of course thatcher demko and michael di pietro as they come up through the ranks all right I, I don't even know, I'd say leave a comment below, but what are you going to comment on? There's nothing really to, to comment on aside from the fact that I'm excited. If this happens, I'll be over the moon, but a lot has to happen for this to happen. And I think we got to worry about free agency and other things first. Anyways, leave a comment below. If you know anything about Dusty or if, if you share my excitement, you probably won't be as excited as me because he's not your first cousin, but I would be thrilled. And one last funny story about Dusty. When Growing up, we'd obviously play street hockey a lot whenever we visit each other. And he would always, he always put me in net and then he would basically take slap shots on me from about six feet in front of me and just whipping them at me, hardly wearing any pads, those goofy street hockey pads, getting hurt, getting injured all the time. And I think that that was Dusty's release. It was his way to take all his frustrations of being a goalie out on his poor younger cousin by four years. So that's it for now. Uh, if you want to follow Dusty, I'm going to put his Twitter account down below um, and follow, you know, follow all the good things he's doing with the Kings organization. And who knows? maybe with the Canucks one day sooner or later. Have a great day. Have a great Canada Day weekend. I'll check in with you after free agent starts, free agent frenzy starts on, on Sunday. Otherwise, have a great day. God bless. Oh yeah, and of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Give this video a like. You can tell I'm excited. I get excited when I talk about the Canucks and especially when I talk about my cousin potentially being with the Canucks. Okay, have a great day. God bless and go Canucks go.